and welcome to our panel here at SCG Con. I am Jeremy Knoll, your moderator, and today we are going to be talking about Brawl with Gavin Verhe. You ready to brawl? <laughs> ready to brawl. Is this what, fisticuffs? Is that what we're doing? It's just an hour of us fighting and yeah. being very bad very, at it. Very poor fighting. Very, like, yeah. uh, old-timey, you know, the, the Queen's boxing, you know? It's Sunday. Yeah. We're all a little punchy here at SCG Con, <laughs> and some people take it more literally than others. So, Brawl was announced uh, in an article by you on March 22nd of this year. You originally said that it was created by someone in Wizards of the Coast named Garrett Turner. Will you tell us a little bit about that and how he came up with, uh, came up, how, how it came up through Watsi and how it got to the point where it is now? Yeah, it's, it's actually a really interesting story. So the thing that, about Wizards is I work in R&D. We all make cards, but anyone in Wizards who has a good idea can come down to R&D, bring it to us, and we'll take a look at it and look at um, working on it. And Brawl actually came to us about a year and a half ago. Uh, Garrett Turner in his local playgroup, and Garrett Turner's a copywriter, so he's the guy that like writes names for our sets, who you know decides what goes on the back of booster boxes, things like that. So still creative stuff, but not quite game design. And him and his friends were a little less experienced, or at least his friends were a little less experienced, and they wanted to be able to play Magic with the cards they had lying around, as standard legal cards. And so they built a format that was kind of like a standard commander variant, in a sense. And they built it just as a thing to try, and it took off in their playgroup. Everyone wanted to play this format all the time. Not unlike we had uh, the commander panel a couple days ago, where Sheldon's yep. like, we, we built commander, and everyone wanted to play this all the time. For Garrett and his friends, it was the same thing. They just kept wanting to play this format. And so he brought it to Wizards, and people inside the company in his department started to play it, and it slowly started to creep out until eventually he's like, okay, I think I really have lightning in a bottle here, and he brought it down to R&D. And that was about a year and a half ago, and we looked at it and said there could be something here. We started playing it, and once again, it was like instant excitement. There are people inside R&D who are like pro tour winners, would never touch a commander deck in their lives, like brewing brawl decks and figuring out what to do, and you know, seeing Dave Humphreys play brawl was, was a blast. So really, it's... It took hold super fast, and it really came from this just initial spark of, hey, let's try this in real life. It's a good idea. Let's keep going with this. And that's where a lot of great things come from. Awesome. So one of the things that you mentioned in the article is that you, there's a quote, taking his original rule set, running play tests, making tweaks, and gathering data. So what were some of the original rules that came out that, like, how did, how did it develop to where it is now? basically. Yeah, one of the big ones is originally it was uh, 20 life um, for even for multiplayer. We've moved it down now for single player to be yeah. uh, 20 life, but for multiplayer it was 20 life um, with the idea being that it wanted to hew to the more standard, like standard yeah. rules. There was commander damage at various points. Um, various deck sizes were looked at, but in, in the whole, actually, the, what we came out with was pretty close to his initial vision with a little bit of life total changes. Um, we d made, decided to make our own ban list as opposed to um, going with the one that he had presented. But on the whole, it was extremely close to his original vision. Okay, so so he had an original ban list for Brawl, and then you decided later to just stay with the standard ban list? Was that, uh, like... How did that decision come about? Yeah, well, we decided to go with the standard ban list at the outset because we wanted your Brawl deck to be also playable as a standard deck. Okay. And there's a lot of advantages of, hey, I go to FNM, I have my Brawl deck built up. If someone wants to play a game of 60 card, normal standard, I can just play the same decks against each other. And there is a lot of value in that. And as we've gone on with time and as Brawl has evolved, we found that, yeah, okay, Brawl should probably have its own ban list. Things like Brawl Chief of Compliance were a big problem, for example. But... At the outset, that's what we wanted to try. And ultimately, I think it was cool. We were able to unban a bunch of those cards and give people a place for a Smuggler's Copter and Aetherworks Marvel and a Tune with Aether to play those cards that they really love where they're not quite as powerful enough as a 4X standard format. Yeah. So that was one of the things that you talked about was Baral Chief of Compliance was a problem. And it mainly came about as a problem on the Magic Online 1v1 Brawl uh, competitive events that, that were taking place. Now, Magic Online launched Brawl and did not have really uh it doesn't have any leagues or anything for the four player format so that was different from the initial idea so did you feel that it wasn't really tested as much one-on-one -on -one and so you didn't see the issues with brawl or were there just like hey after as sometimes happens after countless matches over and over again in this 1v1 now we can see that 
this is something that is a problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we were working on Brawl, we, yeah, we played it multiplayer. It was envisioned as a multiplayer format. But as I mentioned, it kind of quickly grabbed hold and took on a life of its own. And there were many people inside the building, uh, inside Wizards, who said, hey, this isn't just a great multiplayer format. There's a great potential to kind of a, an alternative standard. Like, if you don't have all of the cards you need to build your 4X standard deck, you can go and play Brawl. And it's awesome to be able to crack open a booster pack, slot, and be able to immediately slot in a card or two into your deck so that you just know it will be great. And plus, building a Brawl deck is surprisingly fast. Like, you're going to have 25-ish lands in your deck. You pick your commander, and then you just kind of, you know, you can riffle through your desk and, like, put stuff in there, and it works out. Or at least my desk, because my desk is full <laughs> of magic cards. Um, so, that, that, there were kind of these two uh, different ways we wanted to play at the outset. And with Magic Online, of course, it's built... Uh, you can play multiplayer on Magic Online. You can, you can play Brawl yeah. on their multiplayer right now. Yes. But the one-on-one -on -one is a lot easier to set up, a lot easier to run queues for, leagues, and so on. And so we put it on there to kind of see if that would take hold. And we definitely found that it did. And there's a sizable multiplayer audience, and we're seeing a ton of multiplayer Brawl play, not only online, but offline as well. But there's also this huge one-on-one -on -one contingent. And I'll admit that with one-on-one, -on -one, we knew it would be a thing people would do. We didn't know people would get as excited about it as they were, and it was really great to see. It did mean that we didn't fully test everything, though, and all the permutations. And that led to a little bit of a, a brawl problem. Yeah. It's okay, though. Uh, you know, we, we took a handle it to that, and yeah. brawl's gone now. And we're really closely monitoring the format. One thing is this is a new format. We want to try new stuff out. We're going to have to have some quick iterations. And so instead of even pegging ourselves to certain dates, we're willing to kind of just make announcements when we feel it's appropriate to change things to brawl. So if, for example, we looked at the Magic Online data, and the data, by the way, being huge there, because on Magic Online, we can see all the data of how all the decks do. Um, if, say... Zakama, Primal Calamity, started being a big problem in Brawl. Well, well then we could look at, at axing that. I don't think it is. I actually don't think anything really needs to be banned right now. But it's something we're really closely watching. And as new sets come out and new legends get added, we want to be careful about it. Okay. So when that banning happened with uh, Brawl, Chief of Compliance, you also unbanned several of the cards from the standard ban list. Uh, was that more of a... As you said, you, you decided that you wanted to keep them similar so that somebody could take their Brawl deck and just play in the standard. Now that you knew that this was a problem, you needed to ban Brawl, that it was just kind of like, okay, well, this can have its own separate ban list. We can just take those off, let people play with those in this format where you know they're not as quite as degenerate because there's not four of copies, things like that. Is that the reason why? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. When we separated the two, the standard ban list and the brawl ban list, we decided, hey, let's give them these cards back. And personally, I'm of the opinion I like players playing with their cards. And sometimes we have to ban cards because that's what we do. But where we can find places to let them play them, I really like doing so. And brawl is a great place to once again let those cards live. And if your Aetherworks Marvel deck got banned or your Smuggler's Copters, well, I guess that's a bad example. <laughs> but uh, that one's still too powerful. But if you're tuned with Ethers Got Banned, you want to play your energy deck or something, that can still live on and brawl. And actually, I've been spell slinging here at SCG Con all weekend, and I've played against a number of energy based brawl decks who are very happy to have you know, their rogue refiners and their tuned with Ethers back in the system. And it's cool that they still get to let that deck live on and continue. Yeah, that's awesome. So, one of the things that when you first announced Brawl back in March, it was just kind of announced and it was hey here's this format we hope you have fun playing it uh it's a little bit different from some of the other formats that have come about mainly with things like commander when you tried to support commander more when that was announced several years ago you came out with commander pre-constructed decks brawl didn't have any sort of product when it was originally announced was that intentional did you think like hey we should come up with a product to launch with this announcement or Anything like that? Well, you know, it's funny. In our head, the product for Brawl were standard legal booster packs. It's like, oh, well, if you want to build your Brawl deck, we're going to go buy some Dominari. It'll be great. It's So I wrote an article a few weeks ago on Daily MTG called um, A New Era, I think it was called. Anyway, it talks about the feedback era and how we're entering this point where we want to try things out, see what players think, and then make informed decisions based on their opinions. And so when we launched Brawl, this was really a, let's put this out there, see what people think about it, and then we'll see if we want to keep going with it or not. Because, for example, if we had launched Brawl and it had totally fallen on its face, we would have just said, hey, we tried something out, it didn't work out in Dominaria, we're just going to scale back on this. However, it's been the exact opposite. We launched it and it has been even way more successful than even we thought it was going to be. It's huge. And I think that we absolutely could see a Brawl product in the future now that we know that it's popular. But I would rather know people want something than try and just give them a thing and be like, hey, here's a thing you didn't know you want. Take it. Which 
can work sometimes, but also can be dangerous sometimes. And now that the brawl appetite is there, we'll be definitely considering it in the future. And even from a design perspective, as we're working on future sets now, we are thinking about things for Brawl. For example, uh, some comments about Brawl is there isn't enough mana fixing, there aren't enough sweepers, and getting some more eight, nine mana sweepers that aren't going to impact standard constructed but are, would be great for Brawl is something that we're looking at getting into sets. So making sure that there's a good color distribution, for example. You know, right now there are some three color combinations that you can't play unless you use Joda as your commander. And so looking at our legends and how we're putting those into sets is going to be really important. And, um, you know, Dominaria's got this great legend focus, so there's a lot of legends you can use, but eventually the Dominaria won't be around in standard, and how do we make sure that there are enough legends going forward? So we're taking all these things into account now as we're designing future sets, and it's already made an impact inside R&D. That's great. And, and frankly, the great thing about Brawl is a lot of things that are good for Brawl are also good for Commander. So, yeah. you know, we build more legends into our sets. It's just a big win for everybody. Yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit about that, too. So one of the things that when Brawl, uh, over the last few months after Brawl was announced, is that several people were saying, you know, like, uh, the, 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 a lot of the criticisms came about of, this doesn't seem like a product that anybody asked for. It seems like, why are you watering down Commander, blah, blah, blah. And I believe that there have been several explanations as to uh, the the way that you feel like people will get into Brawl. It's not a commander light, it's more of a, hey, this is what something you can do with some of your cards that you have left over that don't see play in standard. So can you talk a little bit about that mentality? Yeah, you know, I, when we announced Brawl, I think there were a few different camps, and some people saw it as us like trying to take over Command or anything like that. And then that's absolutely not the goal at all. Commander and Brawl can entirely coexist. And in fact, it's good that they coexist next to each other because some Brawl players will get into Brawl, hey, think this is really fun, and go into Commander. And some Commander players will say, hey, there's another way I can play this kind of format. Let's go check out uh, of the way I can play with standard legal cards. And we've seen actually a number of people come into Brawl through different ways. For example, the Drafter. You draft a lot. You don't really ever play standard because it's just too hard to get the cards you need. But after you've drafted a set three or four times, you've got all these piles of cards you can build the deck from. And I'm seeing this player play Brawl when they would never play a constructed format before. I'm seeing commander players who want to try out commanders that are too weak for normal commander in, in this Brawl format. I'm seeing standard players adopt it as, hey, I play standard, I have all these standard cards anyway. Why not build a Brawl deck while I'm here? And so there are a lot of people coming into this circle and there's certainly no attempt to steal commander players away from commander. It's just a great thing for, for both formats to exist. And frankly, it gives us a bigger audience to make those kind of legendary matters cards that people really love for their commander decks. Cool. So you're not emergency making your commander 2018 product into a brawl product. No, as I tell everyone, commander 2018 is still coming out. I, I had lead designed it. It would be very weird for me to try and kill <laughs> commander and launch a commander product in the same year. Yeah. And commander products are not going away. Like they're... Honestly, as a designer, they're one of some of the funnest things to work on because you get to like go back to old worlds and old characters and kind of look around. Like I, I personally love slipping Kamigawa cards into my <laughs> sets right with like Okagachi last year. <laughs> so does so, Justin Parnell. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well, stay tuned if you like Kamigawa. But there's this one for the cameras. Um, but that doesn't mean that Brawl also couldn't get support. And I think we could live in a world where there's a Commander product and a Brawl product. Although, I will continue to maintain that standard boosters are a pretty good Brawl product. They so. are, yeah. Especially Dominaria boosters. Right, yeah. Dominaria, get that legend in every pack. I, a cool thing I've seen, actually, is someone like buy a bundle of, of 10 boosters from Dominaria and just build a Brawl deck right there. There was a store oh, that was running awesome. sealed Brawl events where you all bought a bundle and then built a Brawl deck. I thought that was really, really that cool. That is actually a very cool and idea. And you should try it if you haven't already. It's really cool blast and not only be restricted in like what you can put in your deck already because it's a brawl uh a brawl build but then really get these boosters to crack open and what do you get and how do you build your deck and it was a lot of fun that sounds like a, uh, a great little deck building strategy uh so we're gonna take a couple of questions that were sent in previously if anybody has any questions at all please come see our directors over here in the corner and they will get your questions written down and uh we'll get them up here so first off we have one from adam washburn moses have you been monitoring the health of the format after the bans, unbans, and the life total changes? And additionally, is Watsi still maintaining and looking after the said uh, last as well as starting life totals? Yeah, we're absolutely still looking at everything with Brawl. And as we've said a couple, a couple times in our articles, we want to be flexible. We want to be able to make changes if we need to. And when it comes to things like, for example, the starting life total change, we moved it from 30 to 20 for one-on-one -on -one play. We could absolutely move it back if we feel like we should. We can move it to 25. if. If we run the numbers and it's 27 is the right number, that, that's totally in range for us to do. You know, part of the goal of moving one-on-one -on -one from 30 to 20 is when 
play design is balancing standard, they of course balance everything for a 20 point life total. And Brawl naturally favors controlling decks anyway, because having a bunch of one of seven drops is, well, you can, they'll all be powerful, while there's very few like one drops you can consistently hit on turn one and, and have be strong. So because it naturally favors control already, they thought, hey, let's try out 20 life and in one-on-one -on -one play and see how that works out. Now, the flip side of that is we've seen a lot of the two-drop legendary creatures be quite strong since we made that change. We've seen uh, Karizev, Apatra, show up on Magic Online quite a bit. And you know those are really strong cards and we have them on turn two every single game. So we are really carefully monitoring it, and if we feel like we need to go back to 25, we absolutely can. And as far as bans go, totally, absolutely. I know that you know some cards that we've been watching are um, like Gideon's Intervention is an example. You get to name a card, your opponent can't play the card, you name their commander, uh, that, that's a little sad. But on the flip side, white doesn't have as many tools in these kind of formats generally, so it's good to allow them to have some tools to play around with. It can be interacted with, that kind of thing. So we are really carefully monitoring it, and if we need to make more changes, stay tuned soon. And with um, Core 2019 coming up pretty soon here, we will definitely be monitoring all the legends that are in that set and all the new cards that come in and if we should be making any tweaks there because we, we didn't know how Brawl was going to be received and now that we know that it's going so well, we really want to make sure that the health of the format is maintained with every new release. Okay. So this is a question from the audience. Uh, is the Brawl format going to have equal support for 1v1 and free-for-all? Uh, it'll definitely have support for both. You know, we kind of had to make, make a hierarchy of what we believe is most important. And so we, we because some, ultimately, there are going to be some decisions that are good for both, 1v1 and um, multiplayer, multiplayer, and we should definitely make those. There's going to be some decisions that are bad for one-on-one -on -one and multiplayer. We should definitely not make those. But there's going to be some decisions that are like, well, it's going to be better for one or the other. What direction are you going to go in? And when we made our hierarchy, we ultimately decided that multiplayer was more important uh, a, a little, by a little bit than the one-on-one -on -one play because it really is about bringing people in and giving them a casual format that they don't have somewhere else. You know, what we noticed is there's only one way, really, that people are playing casual magic before Brawl, and it's Commander. Now, of course, there are other people out there playing there are formats at home, there's 60 cards, yeah. singleton decks, prismatic, what have you. But Commander has really become this universal language to play. It's the big one. Casual magic, absolutely. Yeah. And with Brawl, we wanted to kind of create another one. Get In the same way that, you know, if you look at our formats, we've got standard, modern, legacy, vintage. We wanted to be able to give, hey, there's a thing where you can play almost everything, Commander, and there's a place where you can play your new stuff, and that's really cool. And giving that kind of casual format its own life is really important. And we want to make sure that... Uh, that still exists and does well. With that said, though, one-on-one -on -one tends to be a little more competitive, but we definitely want to make sure that that's still fun and enjoyable to play. And we decided that a lot of the bands we make will be more for one-on-one -on -one than for multiplayer. If there's a card that's crazy in multiplayer, we can axe it if we need to. But cards like Brawl, those decks were not good at all in multiplayer because you can't counter three players worth of spells. Yeah. But in one-on-one, -on -one, they're incredibly powerful. So a lot of the bans are going to come for one-on-one. -on -one. So in that case, we are paying a lot of attention to that yeah. format and monitoring it appropriately. I've definitely played against a Brawl deck in 1v1, three-player, and four-player. And outside of 1v1, it is... It, it does get very watered down almost immediately with a, even a third player. So It's very hard to counter all your opponent's spells when they cast more spells than you do every turn. Every turn. So uh, This is one issue that came up several times. Uh, a lot of people are kind of wary of it just being standard only, or they suggest you know various things. Well, like, can we have a modern legal card set? Can we do this? So Michael Lee has asked, how open would you say the powers that be are to opening up the format to being an eternal or even semi-eternal format? In example, uh, cards legal in there that were standard legal together, cards from X number of consecutive blocks or something like that. Ooh, I, get, I get to be the powers that be now. Yeah, I, I like the sound the of this. I, you know, it's something we've talked about a lot because that feedback came pretty. People were, were pretty loud about it when we announced Brawl. Hey, what I like about Commander is that it doesn't rotate. And so we definitely investigated a lot of different options, and a few people tried different things out. Um, a bunch of great efforts were, were made on that front. And it, it certainly does sound like fun to do so, but really after talking about it a lot and thinking about what is the best environment we want to create, what is the goal of this format, keeping it in a standard card pool lets uh, the, the cards shine that are newer and if you're coming in. If we make it eternal, eventually after five years thinking ahead, you're just going to have the same kind of issue that Commander has where you, you're you new, you have all these standard legal cards and none of them are strong enough to compete in, in your decks at all. And so making sure that it is standard legal and you can play with these cards is really important. Now, I've heard a lot of different proposals about what people want to do. For example, um, you can play with a Commander from 
uh, a commander from any set, but all the, your other cards have to be standard illegal. There's, the, of course, the proposal that uh, Jimmy and Josh from the Command Zone have pitched a few times about if your deck was ever standard legal together, you can play it. And that's certainly avenues you could go down in your casual play group, but we want things to be fresh and new, and if you're if you are keeping those old decks together and playing them in environments where they weren't meant to be played, eventually you're going to have a deck that is incredibly strong, and that's just the best thing to play. Yeah. You know, if for example, if Brawl was around in Mirrodin era, it's possible there was a crazy powerful artifact deck, and then people just keep playing that um, forever, and you don't see a lot, a lot of change. So we do want that change to keep happening. But with that said, as I always tell people, Brawl is a casual format. So if you want to play modern Brawl, I'm not going to stop you. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not in every booster pack like popping out and being like, ah, the, the, the Gavin police are here. Yeah. You can't play your <laughs> format. No, it's totally okay. You know, it's casual. Do whatever you'd like. But, on, you know, in things like Magic Online, any, any th other stuff we create, we're going to be thinking about standard Brawl because we do think that's kind of where the future is and uh, what we want to support. With all of that said... We are closely monitoring it, like anything with the format. If we really feel like we should make that change, if we're seeing data, if we're hearing enough from people um, that, that that should happen, um, we'll look into it. You know, a big test for us is this fall when, I, I can say the name now, right? Yes. Oh. Fall, <laughs> the fall in the uh, January, February one, but not the third set in the block. I mean, I was, in the, not, not block, but. I was in the announcement video for that set, and you every time I say the word Ravnica, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> did, did I just leak something? No, okay. So when, when Ravnica hits in the fall, you know, that'll be when, when rotation happens, and I'll be very interested to see how that impacts Brawl players. And I've heard some people really excited, hey, I'll get to build new decks, and some people who will, certainly will be sad when their Kaladesh decks rotate out, and that'll be a big test for the format, and we'll see how it does. But, you know, right now I'm pretty happy with all the early signs that we're seeing. The adoption rate has been a lot higher than we even anticipated. And I'm pretty confident that it'll be able to survive and thrive even with the fall rotation. Yeah, awesome. So that's definitely one of the things that someone has mentioned to me is uh, they, they mentioned going up and building a pack of brawl decks that are all from the original Ravnica with all of the guild leaders as as and that would be like a thing that you do in your casual play group if you wanted to do something like that. Right. I mean, you know, if you think about how Brawl was created, it was created as this great casual way to play magic. <coughs> and it was brought to us in R and D as an idea. So if you have a fun way to play it, go ahead, do it in your own casual play group and who knows, it could become a thing someday. A lot of formats have come from people's ideas. Commander being one, right? I mean, yeah. that's a thing we support now and Sheldon and his play group created it and it's it's huge. So, oh uh, yes, my water <laughs> legion continues. Multiple, multiple we got, we got through two so far, so many we get through before <laughs> the show ends. So, uh, this is something from a uh, question from Kristen Lancelot and it was because we talked about your ideas for having a different uh, band list from the original standard band list, were there any cards in the format that you had considered banning from the first day, thinking that if you weren't just going to use the standard band list, I assume? From the first day, meaning the first day that Brawl was created? Or? When you started tweaking it. So if it was before you decided on the, uh, this, we're just going to use the standard band list, were there any that outright you thought, okay, this is, prob this is probably an issue and we shouldn't use it? Well, you know, when we started testing Brawl, as I mentioned, it came to us about a year and a half ago. We actually sat on the format for a while because we knew Dominaria would be the perfect time to release it. Because it's a format, not a product, we could have kind of rolled it out whenever we wanted to. We could just write an article on the website and make it real. But the legendary theme in Dominaria was a perfect fit because you get that legend in every booster pack. And so, But when we were testing it internally, we were testing it with older sets, Battle for Zendikar. We were testing it with Shadows over Innistrad. And when we were um, playing it. There were a, a few cards that were uh, pretty absurd. Emrakul was, was one that we had to uh, axe pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, turns out not only is Emrakul still incredibly absurdly powerful in Brawl, it has this... <laughs> It's, it's so funny to me because it's the extra turn can be used in really creative ways. Let's say that, that we're playing Jeremy, like you and I, and then we've got, I don't know, we'll say Brad over here, right? And it's like, well, we really want to kill Jeremy, so I'm going to Emrakul Brad. I'm going to have Brad attack Jeremy, and then Brad will take his normal turn and attack Jeremy against, like, I just relentless assaulted Brad, yeah. right? So it's, there's all kinds of weird stuff you can do. And, of course, Emrakul, incredibly powerful card. So there were a lot of cards in that iteration in Battle for Zendikar, Shadows, that we did actually kind of uh, internally ban. But then those cards got moved out, and we decided, hey, let's try the standard ban list. We talked about this a bit earlier. And, you know, if we decided at the outset that we were going to uh, separate the standard ban list and the brawl ban list as we have now, yeah. we would have definitely looked at cards like Sorcerer's Spyglass from the beginning. But 
I, I'm happy that we kind of took the path we did, took players' feedback, and then incorporated it in. That's good. Cool. Uh, another one from Kristen was, uh, some people call the format commander light, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit. Do you consider this format a good stepping stone for creating a commander deck that, for someone who has never played that format? Absolutely. I think you can build a brawl deck with the cards that you have around and turn it into a commander deck as it goes along. And even when rotation hits, some people have said, well, that's, that's when my brawl deck's going to go away. And, you know, to me, that's just the start of a brand new commander deck. Your deck rotates out, add 40 more cards. In fact, in R&D, Ken Nagel has this Merfolk deck that is 60 standard legal cards and 40 eternal legal cards. And if he wants to play commander, he just shuffles it all together. And if he wants to play brawl, he just takes out the 40 eternal legal cards and calls it good. That's so you can even kind of make this modular commander brawl deck, which is a pretty fun thing to do. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, another question from the audience is, do you see Brawl having Wizards of the Coast tournament support in the future, like GPs or anything in that nature? So so at Grand Prix or Star City Games Con, which we're at currently, I believe there are Brawl side events, right? Yes. Like here I've heard many times over the loudspeakers, Brawl events are happening, check them out. Um, and at Grand Prix that are happening and so on, we are currently have Brawl side events. So that's already happening. As far as like a full-scale format, I could see, you know, we wouldn't do a multiplayer yeah. one, -on one on one format, uh, or so we wouldn't do a multiplayer uh, grand or anything like that. But someday in the far future, if one on one is a really popular way to play Brawl, it could happen. I could see running a Grand Prix in it. I, you know, an important thing to us, though, is we do want Brawl to be a casual, a more casual format than competitive standard. And if competitive standard uh, gets, the, gets the Grand Prix, that you, we find that, you know, it gets solved kind of quick people are all jamming to find out what the best decks are and there's a lot of pressure behind it where in brawl it's kind of nice to be relaxed and not be like hey i don't need to min max my 57th card in my deck i can just put in varix blade wing and have a great time so i don't want to really get too competitive with one-on-one -on -one, but maybe in the future if it keeps at the at the trend that it's at it's not impossible or even you know a small little event not a grand prix but like we keep the the brawl weekend where you come out and play multiplayer brawl and yeah and what have you, or multiplayer weekend where with Commander and Brawl events side by side, totally things that could happen and I would be excited to, to do. I mean, I'm sure how many of you guys would come out to a multiplayer weekend full of just multiplayer magic stuff, right. Brawl, Commander? Right. Yeah, there we go. See, we got, it, got a big audience. Yeah. For those watching at home, there were a lot of hands. <laughs> just just imagine your, in your head, hands yeah, there's, everywhere. Th there's already precedent for something like this with the, uh, it, for the Commander uh, Championship or whatever that's happening in Grand Prix Vegas mm -hmm. very shortly that's being kind of helped be put on by Jimmy and Josh of the Command Zone, and it's something that, again, that, that format was developed in originally in like 2003, the original product came out in 2011, and now here we are in 2018, and they're going to have this like larger scale tournament where they're going to have prizes and everything, and, and it's not fully official from Wizards of the Coast, obviously, but it is a large scale tournament that they're trying to put on. I mean, I have a competitive playing background. I came from the grinding circuit, the pro tour circuit, playing week in, week out. And I, I love sitting down in a one-on-one -on -one game of Magic and crushing my opponents mercilessly <laughs> and making them cry. It is a great feeling. The taste of their tears is delicious. But what I found, especially going to Wizards and playing multiplayer Magic, is it's like, yeah, it is fun to play one-on-one -on -one and win, absolutely. But there's the, this pure euphoric joy of playing like a great four-player game with interaction and back and forth and a bit of politics and zany, wacky cards. We've got these commanders that is just, it's hard to beat anywhere else. And that's kind of how Magic was intended. You know, you think about it 25 years ago now, it just came out. It was the way you sat down with your friends. You didn't care what the format was. You didn't care what was in their deck. Maybe it was legal, maybe it wasn't. I mean, who knows? They might have like 20 swamps and 40 plague rats, like whatever, you know? And we just sit down and play and have a good time chatting and playing this game together. And to me, that's what playing multiplayer brawl and commander bring back to me. And I think why those have taken such a great hold in our in our player base. So there's absolutely room for some kind of big commander celebration. And if Vegas is uh, excitement around it is anything to go by, who knows how long it'll take for that to happen? Yeah, right. So Daniel S. Swall <coughs> asks. Are there any cards that have been designed specifically to help improve the Brawl format? Or, I'm guessing this is one of those, are, are you going to keep this format in mind for future sets as well? Um, with Dominaria, we actually did definitely design a few cards knowing we were going to launch a Brawl. Okay. We, we uh, wanted to make, for example, some three color legends at Rare and Mythic Rare. Um, so, for example, Muldroth of the Gravetide was partially like, hey, we should make this three colors so that it could be a Brawl card. Turned out that card's pretty strong, by the way. I've seen a, <laughs> played a number of Commander decks this weekend with that. Um, Joda, being a five-color legendary creature, certainly was a great nod toward Brawl. And when we made 
uh, Fire Song and Sunspeaker, we're like, hey, well, we're going to make a, a, an additional legend for this set. Let's give Red White something that they don't normally do that make, would make a cool commander. And that's where that came from. So a number of things in Dominaria were designed for that. And as I mentioned earlier, absolutely, we are designing for the future with Brawl in mind and getting things like more mana fixing, more sweepers, more of those brawlish effects, finding ways to sneak in political cards where we can. That's a hit for Commander, which is great because people like these cards for Commander. Um, and it's great for Brawl as well. So uh, we absolutely are considering it with our stats going forward. All right. Uh, Hopper Task asks, who is your favorite Brawl Commander and why? <laughs> Well, if I can't say uh, Tamio because I, I got to play with her when we were testing, I can't do that in Brawl anymore. But um, no, really seriously, it's Moldrotha. I, I mentioned it earlier, but I just love that card. Yeah. It's insanely powerful, which doesn't hurt. But it is really fun to kind of build this engine. And in standard, you know, in normal commander, you do some real big shenanigans. So like, mill yourself a bunch, play stuff out of your graveyard. I got, like, strip mine locked yesterday playing against Moldrotha. In standard, it's like, well, you get a little bit of value. You get some sagas in play, and they die, and you play them back. And I find that really fun. And it's one of my favorite three-color combinations. So it's just a great legend to use for Brawl. And I've, I've had a blast playing it so far. Awesome. But, you know, frankly, I'll, I'll try anything once. So find a cool commander. <laughs> Like, I, we built a Valduk Keeper of the Flame deck. That's the guy that if you put a bunch of equipment yeah. and auras on him, he makes tokens. That was still a blast. Like, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm just, just putting stuff on him and, and attacking. It was a blast. We built, um, back when we were testing, this isn't, this isn't back in the olden days. Uh, who's the guy from Battle for Zendikar block, where when you targeted him, all your stuff gets targeted? Zada. Zada, Zada, right. So Zada Hedron Grinder. Back when uh, we were testing internally, uh, Yanni Skullnick built a Zada Hedron Grinder deck that was super great at like causing chaos to happen with all of his creatures. Anyway, he, I, I, that was a lot of fun. So well, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try anything with a Brawl Commander once, but Muldrotha is like the one I'm enjoying the most right now, and then I have a Hapatra deck as well that I brought with me. Awesome. All right, so the last question we have here from Gavin. It's not for me, I promise. No, not, not from you. And this is something you kind of touched on a little bit, but just to kind of get your opinion, do you think that the Brawl format is going to suffer during the Autumn rotation with having so many fewer cards in the standard? It's definitely something that we're taking into consideration, but, you know, frankly, one of the cool things about Brawl is you get that constraint. You know, Rosewater always says restrictions breed creativity, and I really do believe it. And in the same way that your standard deck is restricted to fewer sets when rotation happens, your Brawl deck's going to be restricted to fewer sets, and you'll get to play some cards you might never get to play otherwise. And it's kind of fun to play things that wouldn't normally make your deck. You're like, okay, well, well what, what's going to be my deck this time? I remember many, many moons ago, back when Block Constructed was a thing, when a set would come out on Magic Online, even though we weren't running any, block, running any Block Constructed events for it, you could play Block Constructed on Magic Online right away. And so you would have these one-set Block Constructed formats where you were playing 60-card, four-copy decks of, like, one set in Estrad. And what did your deck look like yeah. in this world? And I always really enjoyed that kind of restricted creature. Like, okay, well, what's the only answer in, in this format to an artifact? Well, there's, like, three cards that kill off an artifact. Okay, you got to play, like, Demolish or whatever the card is, right? So... It's not going to be quite that crazy when when fall when it rotates. And fortunately, Ravnica has a lot of really great stuff for Brawl. I mean, multicolor sets are fantastic for that. Yeah. So I think it'll be just fine. Okay, cool. So that about wraps us up today. I know we're going to cut a little, little bit short, but thank you so much, Gavin, for coming out. Where can people find you online? Search my name. Google, Google me. I'm everywhere. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gavin Verhey. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Tumblr, all under the same name. And I write weekly for Daily MPG as well. So feel free to look around. And frankly, like I said, just, just Google my name and stuff will come up. This is my go. pretty picture. Gavin will also be available spell slinging for a decent part of today as well. Yeah, I'll be here until 6 p.m. just battling games right over there. So if you want to play some Magic, come over and say hi. I got Brawl decks. I have everything. If you want to play some Brawl or talk with, some Brawl with Gavin, he will be available until 6 p.m. Or just fisticuffs. I mean, whatever. Or fisticuffs. Thank you all so much for coming out and have a great rest of your SEG. Thank you.